check this out and have a proper careful look. This is a photograph leaked by some as yet unidentified person, most probably an insurance or salvage insider. It's a photograph of some of the burnt out vehicles on board the Dutch oven, also previously known as the Fremantle Highway. It was leaked to and posted by an German politician named Andres Morosek, and I hope I didn't butcher your name too badly, Mr. Morosek. He's presently campaigning for improved EV shipping safety standards, and I'd really like to think we could all agree that reform on the high seas in this area is a really, really good idea, but I'm sensing some worrying pushback in the force. A lot of insufferable green evangelists are claiming that all the EVs on board the Dutch oven just miraculously survived, just like that, kind of like the loaves and the fishes. Amazing. But this photo proves beyond reasonable doubt that they did not. Can you spot the proof? Like, dude, it's just there, hidden in plain sight. Perhaps I'll play some thinking music. I'm John Logan from AutoExpert.com.au. New cars, cheap, Australia only. Website, Todd. Now, I know EVs are to some a religion. Cult is probably a better word. A cult of insufferable, virtuous green twats. I don't hate EVs, au contraire. I think there's a real solid case for their partial deployment and implementation across society as an alternative to internal combustion, but I can't stand the green evangelising twats. Maybe that's a character defect. The salient thing about cults is, of course, that they will brook no criticism whatsoever of their fundamental beliefs, no matter how balanced or accurate those criticisms might be. To these interesting individuals, the facts really don't matter. So it's time to prove in this report, once and for all, using this photographic evidence, that electric vehicles did indeed burn deep in the bowels of the Dutch oven. This report is sponsored by NordVPN. Visit nordvpn.com slash AEJC now for an exclusive discount. Scammers and hackers truly are the cockroaches of the online world. Like, no matter how hard we try, they seemingly cannot be eradicated. These people spend their lives phishing with a PH. They're trying to scam us out of our passwords. They've got malware and ransomware. It never ends. It's a sewer. This happens all the time, okay? You think you've just connected to free Wi-Fi, and meanwhile, one of these roaches has just inserted himself between you and the internet like a leech, and he's about to start sifting through your data. This is actually called a man-in-the-middle attack. It's very common. But you don't have to be the next victim, right? You just need effective countermeasures, and that's exactly what NordVPN does. Nord does stuff that you and I don't really understand in the background. They encrypt your online traffic, they hide your IP address, and they bring other threat protection features to the front line of a fight that you might not even know you're in until it's too late. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now. You'll get a huge discount, plus up to four additional months free and a 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC. Link in the description. Just subscribe, download the app and connect. One click later, you are better protected. It's the fastest VPN on the planet. Your IP address is shielded. Your online traffic is masked with state-of-the-art encryption. We're talking NSA spec encryption across as many as six of your devices. That's your phone, your tablet, your laptop, times two, his and hers, whatever. There's 24 seven support and it costs only about as much as a cup of coffee every month to keep your data, your identity and your devices secure. And it works across Windows, Mac, Linux, Android and iOS. Because your location is masked, you're going to be able to access streaming and other services that might be blocked where you live. Plus, another bonus, you can continue to watch your favourite content when you travel overseas. 
all up, it's a pretty small price to pay for enhanced cybersecurity and greater access to this and that online. Go to nordvpn.com slash AEJC now to get more secure and enjoy a big discount, plus those extra months of free subscription time. Totally risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash AEJC, link in the description, and thanks to Nord for sponsoring this episode. I do hope you've spotted it by now because there's been ample opportunity, dude. I'm just going to zoom in a bit on the image if you don't mind, and I certainly hope you can see it now. Look at that right headlight aperture, which is on the left side as you look at it. And the seductive curve of that mudguard. Check the overall proportion of the height and width of the windscreen. This is quite an expensive, low-slung, high-performance electric car. That is a very distinctive shape, a very specific shape. In fact, there's only one car in the world shaped just like that. It's from the world's most criminal car company, Volkswagen. In this case, it's from Volkswagen's rich twat detecting subsidiary, Porsche. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a literally smoking gun, a shitbox Porsche take can, or what's left of it. There is no doubt. Same car that is suspected of sinking the Felicity Ace 18 months ago. Now, let me be crystal clear on this. I am not saying that this specific Taycan in that leaked photograph is the one that lit up the Dutch oven. I'm not saying it caused the blaze. I'm saying that is a burnt out EV on board that somewhat fucked car carrier. And doubtless there's going to be others, plus burnt out hybrids and plug-in hybrids. Therefore, I would argue any claim that all EVs aboard have survived, praise electric Jesus, it's a miracle. They're just emphatic bullshit. It's like, we really, really want this to be true. Unfortunately, it's not. Here's a quote from electdrive.com, which is Nothing like a piece of objective reporting, at least not in my estimation. About 1,000 cars, including the 498 electric ones, are in good condition. This is according to the chief of salvage company Royal Boscalis Westminster NV, Peter Burdowski. Goodness me, should have gone to Specsavers. You are looking right now at one shitbox take can that appears not to be in, quote, good condition. It seems to be ever so slightly fucked, at least in my opinion. What's the bet the EV-appeasing so-called media just ignore this somewhat inconvenient truth? The Driven.io is a kind of soft porn news outlet for anybody who finds themselves titillated at the prospect of electric utopia. So here's a recent tease from them. Speculation widely blamed one of the 498 EVs on board after an employee of the ship owner, Japanese company K-Line, which also owned the 2021 Suez Canal blocker Ever Given container ship, initially suggested an EV might be the culprit. However, between 900 and 1,000 cars, including the EVs, appeared to be in good condition. The chief of salvage company Royal Boscalis Westminster NV, Peter Burdowski, told media last week. The facts are, this fire burned for a week, near enough, and it could not be fought. It was not put out, it went out when it ran out of fuel. This is a picture of a burned out EV. Like, dude, that's what it is. Doubtless, there's going to be more. Some cars survived. Yay. My strong advice there. Don't you be buying a demonstrator anytime soon. Well, so much for the sensationalist media jump on the bandwagon without evidence BS. It has now been established by the salvage company that the fire did not start from EVs and did not even spread to the deck where the 498 EVs were located. 
there were 3,784 cars on board and between 900 and 1,000 is still in good condition, including all of the EVs. The original story came from the Japanese owner of the ship, who incidentally also owned the Ever Given that blocked the Suez Canal last year, when he suggested the fire may have started in an EV. This was picked up by the media and sensationalised. Yeah, indeed, dude. Quote, all of the EVs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This ship, right, it's 200 metres long and 32 metres wide. Look it up, because I did. By my rough calculations, 500-ish EVs would occupy more than one deck in practice because they would occupy exactly one deck if there were no bulkheads, services or support structures in the intervening ship, which clearly there must be. Plus, on board there has to be an undisclosed number of hybrids. It is inconceivable that they all survived and clearly we have photographic evidence now that at least one did not. All the EVs were recovered off the ship unburned. The cause of the fire is still unknown, but it obviously wasn't due to the EVs. I did not know YouTube had enabled comments from a parallel universe. Isn't technology wonderful? According to the latest news, which I've seen, like this morning, not a single car has been recovered off that ship. So there's that. Plug-in hybrids, which nobody's talking about here, like no idea how many of those were on board. Plug-ins have about 20% of the battery capacity of a full EV, and it's the same technology. So there's, in a sense, five mini thermal runaways that are equivalent to a full EV thermal runaway, or even, in a sense, worse, because they're each wrapped in proportionally somewhat more potential fuel, i.e., the rest of the friggin' car. <sighs> Go live in whatever fantasy universe you want, dude. But back here in reality, and I will leave the door open if you'd like to return, there is an inherent elevation in risk when transporting EVs, and let's not forget hybrids. This is because of the runaway event known as a thermal runaway. It's a specific failure mode inherent to lithium-ion batteries. There were 209 ship fires reported during 2022, the highest number in a decade, and 17% more than in 2021, according to a report from insurer Allianz Global Corporate and Specialty. Of that total, 13 occurred on car carriers, but how many involved EVs was not available. That's from Reuters. It's the most ship fires in a decade. Like, hold that thought. The European Maritime Safety Agency said in a March report the main cargo type identified as responsible for a large share of cargo fire accidents included lithium-ion batteries. That's also from Reuters, which still manages to do actual journalism. Go figure. A dude named Rich McLaughlin, who's head of maritime engagement at Lloyd's Register, the insurer, told shipping news agency Tradewinds that lithium-ion battery fires are a significant concern for shipping, both as a potential risk and in terms of emergency response procedures. He said the rapid onset of thermal runaway, the associated chemical fire and the potential ignition of explosive gases off-gassing caused by either battery cell breakdown, failure of the battery management system or impact damage to the battery has, like any fire on board, the potential for serious consequence. None of this matters, of course, if you are a paid-up member of the cult. Here's a post from Bobby Llewellyn. He's the host of the somewhat evangelical Fully Charged show. You can't criticise EVs. Like, it's just, it's not allowed. Bobby describes himself on X, the corpse of Twitter, as being, quote, born at 314 parts per million CO2. Fuck's sake, dude. I cannot wait until the woke brigade petitions governments worldwide to revise the frickin' calendar so that events in history can be attributed only to the partial pressure of CO2 in the atmosphere which pertained at the time they occurred. 
perhaps that's what Captain Kirk was on about with that whole star date beeswax. I do love the chat. Captain's log, star date, 314-1424-344454, etc. Whatever. This obsession in the cult for exonerating EVs, I mean, they take that kind of shit very seriously. It's as if advocating for safer practices to prevent disasters of this nature in future is actually just a personal attack on their particular Jesus. In this case, obviously, electric Jesus. The fact is, okay, the presence of a big fuck-off lithium-ion battery in a plug-in hybrid or a full EV in a confined space, such as a ship or a car park, elevates risk. The most effective countermeasure to this risk is not simply to deny it exists, it's deal with it. This is a low-probability, high-consequence risk. And in that respect, it's kind of like nuclear power. It's hardly ever a problem with nuclear power, but when there is, it's somewhat memorable. Of course, there aren't that many nuclear power stations around the world. Last time I looked, 436 of them across 32 countries. But soon there's going to be dozens upon dozens of EVs in an enclosed space near you, several times every day. And the time to deal with this risk and invoke the required safety reforms would be now. The cause of the fire, while still officially undetermined, has raised questions about what blind spots there are when transporting electric cars powered by batteries, which when they catch fire can't be extinguished by water or even by oxygen deprivation. That's Nathan Habers, spokesperson for the Royal Association of Netherlands Ship Owners, speaking to Reuters in response to the recent Dutch oven open ocean cookout. And I suppose for balance. Wait, what hat? Hashtag EVs were not the cause of the hashtag ship fire that was blamed in EVs by many reporters and YouTube bloggers. Hashtag OSEV. Will there be any follow up at Cadogs? And we wonder why the EVs cause fire myths won't die. Hashtag misinformation. That's from a person, probably not all that objective as people go in this domain, called Sydney EV, calling me out using the corpse of Twitter. Mr or Mrs EV, who could be a bot or non-binary, I suppose. It's so confusing these days. Anyway, personal pronoun TBA EV recently said of this fine upstanding, albeit intellectually highbrow YouTube channel. Don't watch as much as it used to. He's tending a lot more to the clickbait audience than actual factual education. Thank you so much, pronoun TBA EV, for that vital bit of feedback. Now, to all of you zealous electric utopians and wannabe Elon Musk children generally, I would respectfully retort, the experts quoted here, and I'm not talking about myself, I'm talking about the actual shipping experts quoted by reputable outlets such as Reuters and trade journals and things of that nature. They're simply not in the business of touting misinformation. Something does not get to be misinformation simply because you don't like it. That leaked photograph of that incinerated Porsche Taycan, that's not misinformation, it's evidence of what actually occurred on board. Battery fires and catastrophic thermal runaways are a salient risk in our electrified future. This is called a fact, but hey, you do not have to like it. That's not a prerequisite. But if you want to minimise the risk, you can't just deny that this fact exists. That's crazy. Nobody's calling for EVs to be cancelled. That's certainly not my objective, although zealot nuts in that camp do certainly exist. I'm not one of them. The responsible voices are calling for better risk management. In the olden days, things were simple, right? Because we had an agreed set of facts. World Wars I and II happened, for example. There used to be slavery in the US. There was even a shameful stolen generation here, etc. None of these things is an example of humanity operating at its full potential and being all it could be, but hey, they happened. There's no real disagreement on any of that because they're agreed facts. 
But I've got to say, if this kind of shit happened today, imagine the tsunami of bullshit which would erupt from the corpse of Twitter. In the modern world, there are many for whom the facts really don't matter anymore. The inconvenient ones in particular, the ones that don't fit a preferred narrative. This is a form of extreme confirmation bias. It's weaponized by the likes of Twitter's corpse and, of course, YouTube. Like, you can watch a thousand videos and tweet a million tweets about EVs farting only unicorn farts and Chanel number no. 5 or whatever other fantasy just happens to light up your life. Like, we never went to the moon, climate change isn't real, 9-11 was an inside job, Princess Di was assassinated by MI6, the Roswell crash, the Elders of Zion, the Satanic Panic, fluoride in the frickin' water, and those damned chemtrails controlling our thoughts. And that really is just scratching the surface. It's not even a brief executive summary of what's out there. Pick whatever nut club appeals, dude. Thanks to connectivity, your membership is just a click of the mouse away and just join any club you want. It's free. As comforting and simple as this process is, bringing roughly equivalent nut bags together across time and space to braid each other's hair in a safe space where the facts won't hurt them, there's just one minor problem, isn't there? And I hope you can see it. The epistemology of reality gets broken. And this really matters because humanity has only ever advanced when it embraced the facts, especially the inconvenient ones. There's always a problem crying out for the next human genius. An Archimedes, a Galileo, a Pythagoras, a Newton, a Pascal, a Bernoulli, an Oppenheimer, a Hawking or an Einstein. I just can't understand why the most vocal proponents of EVs aren't at the front of the fucking queue shouting for improved safety standards. They're standing there worshipping at the feet of the hallowed EV, telling the rest of us that its shit doesn't stink, while every disaster between now and when we get better standards... It puts a real dent in the reputation of EVs in the minds of the rest of us out here in ambient humanity.